Yes, this picture has sound. You can hear this picture. What, you think I'm lying? Okay then, can you hear this? Or this? How about this? Yes, it's a picture on a page in a book on a shelf gaining dust. But all you have to do is look inside. As soon as you open her up, you're immediately met with a katana ripping through this man's face. Holy shit! This guy being literally cut in half like a hot knife through butter. The winning kick exploding from his foot and screaming through the air into the goal. The audience roars. The sweat drips from his face as his teammates tackle him. My brother in Christ, Manga is alive. Okay, so I know the title of this video might sound dumb. A manga's just a bug. Someone forgot to take their Lexapro again. Shut up. That's what you sound like. No, I'm not crazy. These pages sing. So first, let's start with sound effects. These are the things that look like this on the page, and they'll usually tell you what sound is happening right now. So what's interesting about sound effects is that they're usually incorporated as part of the art. Sometimes you don't even fully see them. You just feel them as a part of the bigger picture. It really makes you feel like you're holding a dead tree. In manga, sound effects must be seen to be heard, which sounds paradoxical, but it's not. The eerie emptiness of the town that's cursed by spirals. The rumbling of a looming threat. The sadness. The pain. The anger. The violence. It's all written right here. Sometimes, depending on the translation team, the sound effects will be written in English next to the Japanese version so that English readers can better understand them. In a way, this gives readers two ways to interpret the scene. And the English effects, of course, are helpful when you're starting out, but I personally feel them to be inferior to the Japanese. Since the Japanese character can be interpreted as part of the art, I personally feel that the English effects can kind of give it away instead of letting the reader feel the effect. Like sometimes the shape and size of the kanji can tell you what the sound is without you even reading the translation. Like you know what this means, right? I have no clue how to read Japanese, but I still know that that stabby thing looks like shing. For people like me who can't read Japanese, these words are felt. Not read, yet still understood. And little bits like this add to the atmosphere of any scene. But sure, if you're still in baby mode, the English effects help. But then there's also speech bubbles, which are an essential part of any manga and some anime too. Without them, there's very few stories that would make sense. The placement of these bubbles can be very important as well. Uh, for some scenes, you'll have bubbles taking up the entire page, even covering part of the character speaking. Like when this girl is huffing copium because she got stood up by Chainsaw Man, or to explain the very important details of Genos' backstory, or the intimate lives of starfish at the freaking aquarium. There's also different kinds of speech bubbles. To keep them organized in my head, I like to think that they're kind of like italics, bold, underline, all that stuff. Most are just round, just the regular schmegula, the bottom shelf, the normal stuff. This is usually just regular dialogue, most of the time. But then you have these jagged ones that can show more anger or rage or just any time Bakugo opens his mouth. A character is yelling and screaming, and these jagged lines help you to understand and feel that more deeply, more intensely, as the author intended. Then there's also square boxes like this, and these can usually be a narrator explaining backstory, or lore, or setting, or the main character's dramatic thoughts as they're about to deck someone in the face. And there's also slightly different square boxes that can indicate when a robot is talking, or when someone's using uh, walkie-talkies or things like that. There's even black speech bubbles, like when a villain speaks or when a dark truth is said. So with all that, there's already a ton of different options for sound. Sometimes the plain background can put the words in even higher importance, like when the entire air is sucked out of the world as she says, You're filthy. In some cases, speech bubbles can seem like characters in their own right, crowding the page around the MC to make the reader feel even more trapped, like the situation is even more dire. And each and every one of these speech bubbles is said in a different way by a different person with a different emotion or a different inflection. Maybe they're tired, maybe they're sad, or they're angry, or they're drooling over girls, or whatever it is. And the coolest part is, your mind creates these voices. 
You can hear Denji in your head talk about touching boobs. You can hear the old masters argue in Musashi's consciousness. You can read so fluidly that these words on the page are heard, and that is simply amazing. And then there's backgrounds. Backgrounds can not only provide context to where a character is, but these can also provide sound as well. The sound is created in your mind as you take in a page, like voodoo magic. The quiet focus of the forest as Musashi trains. Pain's robes flowing in the howling winds high above Konoha. Each icy, crunching step Mori takes as he scales the toughest mountain in the world. Just the setting can have an unconscious effect on the sounds that are playing in a scene. It's the world that the scene exists in. Even if the effects aren't telling you what's happening, you still probably know what a busy city sounds like. Therefore, this is sound design too. And also, different mangakas have different approaches to how they portray sound in their mangas. Shinichi Sakamoto has a special relationship with sound in his works that is incredibly odd and yet enthralling and enlightening. Many times when deciding a scene, instead of illustrating what's actually happening, he'll instead show what the character is feeling through a more obvious or overt depiction. Like during an avalanche in The Climber, instead of drawing the snow and rubble cascading down the mountain, we instead see a skyscraper collapsing in on itself. The scale of this feels much scarier, much more real, more dangerous, and perfectly encapsulates the sheer danger that the main character is in. Also an avalanche is probably harder to draw, but... And then there's also this scene. If you know, you know. Every scene showing a winning goal in Blue Lock is drawn with such sauce, such overwhelming Sigma male badass energy that you can feel your eardrums burst from the sonic boom every single time. But seriously, Yusuke Nobuda's intense experience with gesture drawing really brings these pages to life and gives them so much energy. Speed lines are another element of sound in manga and are what really helps so many fighting manga have that oomph and power behind their attacks. This is where you feel that boom as Bakugo gets punched in the face. Each spike on Chainsaw Man's chainsaw is spinning wildly as he rips through zombies like your finger ripping through the wet toilet paper as you wipe your keister. This stuff is awesome! The bedroom of his chainsaw starter is the last thing devils hear, and that's when you know that the fun begins. But yeah, speed lines are supposed to depict, uh, speed, but since we've all seen anime, we know that these lines have sound too, because that's how they're depicted. And that's where we get the info so that our brains can hear speed lines. It's all connected, man. So what's my point with all of this? That's a good question, I have no idea. I guess I just wanted to point out that manga as a medium can be just as entrancing and immersive as videos or movies or video games. And maybe now that you know this, maybe you'll pick up manga. Maybe you'll read The Climber, Uzumaki, Chainsaw Man, Blue Lock, or any other work of art. You know, there is so little you have to do these days to be entertained. YouTube and TikTok assault your senses with schmucks putting Subway Surfer on a 30 second video that's just a clip from Joe Rogan, drool oozing from your mouth as you subject your eyes to the scalding white heat of the screen. No wonder you can't sleep. Every single day, there's just more and more noise. <sighs> Look, just read manga. It's so peaceful, so patient. Sitting on the coffee table while you stare at your phone for 16 hours straight, waiting for you like your mom waits for you to call her back. One of the last pieces of physical media you can own and a faceless corporation can't take it away after they told you that you needed it. An entire world printed onto pieces of paper, crafted by a single person or a small team through countless hours of work. All you have to do is turn a page and you'll find something amazing. Something that is only shared between you and the book. The soft printing of the cover. The character bios and the catch-up to prep you for the next part of the story. The chapter covers. And then the sound. An element that you maybe never thought about. But it's there. And it's fantastic. And that's my point. Speaking of fantastic... Segway! I made a video on some fantastic manga a while ago that have great sound design themselves. Like they have crazy stuff like airships or monsters that explode and they're full of money. So you should check that out. Click right here.
You can also check out my Patreon to learn more about how I make my videos and my tragic backstory. That's patreon.com slash sriracha. Link below. Alright, well that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.